Modal Analysis Modal analysis is used to characterize resonant vibration in machinery and structures. Resonant vibration can cause or contribute to a wide variety of problems. If a noise or vibration problem is due to the excitation of a structural resonance, then the structure either has to be isolated from the excitation source or physically modified to reduce the magnitude of vibration. An ODS analysis shows how a machine or structure is vibrating and where excessive vibration levels occur for various points and directions. Modal analysis indicates whether or not the excessive vibration is due to a structural resonance. You can compare both ODSs and mode shapes in Emiscope VES to determine whether or not a resonance is being excited. Experimental modal parameters are estimated by curve fitting an analytical frequency response function parametric model to a set of experimental FRF data. The unknown parameters of the parametric model are the modal frequency, damping, and residues, or mode shape components, for each mode. The residues are then saved as the mode shape for each mode. The outcome of curve fitting is a set of modal parameters, frequency, damping, and mode shape, for each mode that is identified in the frequency range of the measurements. After curve fitting is completed, these modal parameters are stored in a shape table from which they can be displayed in animation on a structure model. Modal parameter estimation is done in several steps. 1. Determine the number of modes in a frequency band of measurements. 2. Estimate modal frequency and damping for the modes in the frequency band. 3. Estimate modal residues for the modes with frequency and damping estimates. And 4. Save the modal parameters into a shape table file. Executing help Demos Frequency Based ODS will open the gymbeam.vtprj project and initiate animation from the data block window. The gymbeam.vtprj project file contains a data block file with FRF measurements in it. In this exercise, you will curve fit the FRFs in the data block to obtain modal parameters, save the parameters into a shape table, and display the mode shapes in animation from the shape table. Execute help demos, frequency-based ODS, to open the gymbeam.vtprj and initiate animation from the data block window. Execute modes, modal parameters, in the block FRF's data block window to terminate the animation and initiate curve fitting. When curve fitting is initiated, the data block window is changed into the following curve fitting format. 1. The traces are graphed in the upper left corner. 2. The mode indicator function is graphed in the lower left corner. And 3. The curve fit panel is displayed on the right side of the data block window. The curve fit panel contains all of the controls for curve fitting and a spreadsheet for viewing and editing the modal parameter estimates. The size of the curve fit panel can be changed by dragging the red splitter bar horizontally, and the size of either graph can be changed by dragging the horizontal blue splitter bar vertically. To clear all of the previous fit data from the data block file, execute curve fit, clear all fit data, and click on yes in the dialog box that opens. The first step of modal parameter estimation is to determine how many modes are represented by the resonance peaks in a frequency band of a set of FRF measurements. Scroll through the traces by dragging the vertical scroll bar to the right of the traces display. There are at least 10 peaks in the first trace measurement number 1, meaning that there are at least 10 modes represented in the set of FRF measurements. However, it is usually not possible to tell from just one measurement how many modes are actually represented in the entire set of FRFs. There are two ways to determine the number of modes represented by peaks in the FRFs. 1. Overlay all of the traces, visually inspect them for resonance peaks, and enter the number of peaks counted into the modes box. Or 2. Press the Count Peaks button on the Mode Indicator tab of the Curve Fit panel. The Count Peaks button on the Mode Indicator tab of the Curve Fit panel is used to count the resonance peaks in a set of measurements. Notice that the current Mode Indicator method is the Modal Peaks function. Press the Count Peaks button. A dialog box will open allowing you to choose a part of the trace data to use for calculating the Mode Indicator, in this case the Modal Peaks function. The real part, imaginary part, or the magnitude of the FRF data is used to calculate the mode indicator. 
Notice that the imaginary part is already chosen. Press the OK button to calculate the mode indicator and count its peaks. After the mode indicator has been calculated, the following will take place. 1. A graph of the mode indicator is displayed in the lower left corner of the window. 2. The peaks above the threshold, the dotted horizontal line, on the mode indicator graph are counted. Each modal peak is indicated with a red dot on the mode indicator. 3. The modes box on the mode indicator tab and the frequency and damping tab is set equal to the number of peaks counted. In this case, 10 modes were counted. In most cases, especially with noisy data, it is better to build up a list of modal frequencies and damping by curve fitting in small bands using as few modes as possible. In this example, however, since the FRFs are relatively noise free, we will estimate frequency and damping for all 10 modes at once. Notice that global fitting is chosen next to the modes box on the frequency and damping tab. Global curve fitting is done on all or selected traces. Local curve fitting is done on each individual trace. To estimate frequency and damping by curve fitting only the first trace, drag the vertical blue scroll bar next to the trace graph to its topmost position to display the first trace. Hold down the control key and click on the trace to select it. Notice that a green background is displayed on the selected trace. Make sure that the orthogonal polynomial method is chosen on the frequency and damping tab. Press the frequency and damping button and click on yes in the dialog boxes that open. When curve fitting of the selected trace is completed, frequency and damping estimates for 10 modes will be listed in the modal parameter spreadsheet and the modes will be selected. The frequency estimate of each selected mode in the modal parameter spreadsheet is displayed as a vertical line on the mode indicator graph. Each modal damping estimate is displayed as a horizontal line crossing the vertical frequency line where length of horizontal line equals 2 sigma, where 2 sigma equals half power point damping. 2 sigma is approximately equal to the width of the resonant peak at 70.7% of the FRF peak magnitude value, which is the same as half of the peak value squared, or half of the power of the FRF. Hence, 2 sigma is the width at the half power point of a resonance peak. To display the half power point damping lines more clearly, execute display, zoom, and zoom the display around a few resonance peaks. In order to compare damping values between modes, the damping must be displayed in hertz. To display damping in hertz, right click on the column heading area of the modal parameter spreadsheet. Check damping hertz to display that column and click on OK to close the box. Notice that modes 4 and 5 have quite a difference in their damping values. A large disparity in modal damping values is usually not expected unless there is a special damping mechanism that is affecting one mode more than another. In this case, the difference may be due to curve fitting error because only one FRF was curve fit. More accurate frequency and damping estimates are usually obtained by doing a global curve fit on all of the FRFs. To estimate frequency and damping for 10 modes using all 99 of the FRF measurements, execute curve fit, delete selected modes, to delete the selected modes from the modal parameter spreadsheet. Drag the vertical blue splitter bar to the left to expose the traces spreadsheet. Double click on the select column heading in the traces spreadsheet until all of the traces are unselected. Make sure that global is selected on the frequency and damping tab. Press the frequency and damping button again and click on yes in the dialog box that opens. When the global curve fitting is completed, a new set of modal frequency and damping estimates will be added to the modal parameter spreadsheet. Notice that the global estimates of modes 4 and 5 are more consistent with the estimates for the other modes. However, the final test of curve fitting accuracy is whether or not the mode shapes look realistic for the test article in question. After the modal frequencies and damping have been estimated, modal residues are estimated during the second curve fitting step. To estimate the residues for all 10 modes using all 99 FRF traces, execute Display, Unzoom to unzoom the display. 
make sure that all modes are still selected in the modal parameter spreadsheet. Make sure that all of the traces are still unselected. Press the Residues button on the Residues and Save Shapes tab of the Curve Fit panel and click on Yes in the dialog box that opens. After the residue curve fitting is complete, estimates of residue magnitude and phase for all 10 modes and each trace will be added to the modal parameter list. Once the frequency, damping, and residue have been estimated for all modes, a red fit function is also calculated and overlaid on each trace. It is often more convenient to curve fit in smaller cursor bands to minimize the influence of out-of-band modes or non-resonant peaks in the FRF measurements. To obtain residue estimates by curve fitting FRF data only within a cursor band, execute Display, Cursors, Band Cursor, and drag the edges of the band to enclose the 10 resonance peaks. Press the Residues button again and click on Yes in the dialog box. When residue curve fitting has completed, the fit function is only displayed over the frequency span of the band cursor because only that data was used for curve fitting. Notice that the residue estimates are also slightly different when residue curve fitting is done in a cursor band. The previous curve fitting steps can all be carried out automatically by executing the curve fit, quick fit command. When this command is executed, the following steps are carried out. One, a new mode indicator is calculated using the current method on the mode indicator tab if none is displayed, and its peaks above the noise threshold line are counted. 2. Frequency and damping curve fitting is done for the number of peaks counted using the current method on the frequency and damping tab, and estimates are put into the modal parameter spreadsheet. 3. Residue curve fitting is done for the modes in the modal parameter spreadsheet using the current method on the residues tab. To perform a quick fit of the 99 FRFs in the data block window, execute Curve Fit, Clear All Fit Data, and click on Yes in the dialog box that opens to clear all of the curve fitting data from the data block. Execute Curve Fit, Quick Fit. When Quick Fit has completed, the curve fitting results will be displayed. After modal frequency, damping, and residues have been estimated for all modes of interest, the final step of curve fitting is to save the modal parameters into a shape table file. Press the Save Shapes button on the Residues and Save Shapes tab. A dialog box will open, listing all currently open shape tables in the project. Press the New File button to create a new shape table. Enter My New Shapes into the dialog box and click on OK to save the modal parameters into the new shape table. The shape table window will open, listing the modal frequencies and damping of the 10 modes of the gym beam. When modal parameter estimation is complete and the mode shapes have been saved into a shape table, curve fitting can be terminated in one of two different ways. One, execute curve fit, close to terminate curve fitting. Or two, execute modes, modal parameters again. To display the mode shapes in animation, you will need to open the Gym Beam structure file with the structure model in it. If you previously opened the gymbeam.vtprj project file, the photo Gym Beam structure file should already be open. Close all other windows except the shape My New Shapes window. Execute window, arrange, for animation, in the Emiscope VES window to arrange the structure photo gym beam and shape my new shapes windows in the work area. Execute draw, animate in the structure photo gym beam window to initiate animation from the shape my new shapes window. Press each of the shape buttons in the shape table window to display each mode shape in animation.